So you're looking for just the right breed of dog for your family and you're considering getting a Doberman. You want a great companion who can join the family on family outings, uh, who can be like a friend for the kids, who can get along with your other pets, and if need be, who can even protect your family. Look, I've been there. Deciding on what kind of breed of dog is just a horrible decision that takes forever because you want to find some uh, a dog that meshes well with your family and gets along with everybody and all your animals. So today I'm going to tell you kind of what you can expect if you decide to get a Doberman as your family dog. And uh, we'll talk about kind of what it's like having a Doberman in the family environment and how they get along with kids, with cats, um, with other dogs, and even with other animals in the home. And lastly, I'm going to tell you what we did, my wife and I, to make it so our Doberman Cooper is 100% trusted with kids of all ages. And I do mean all ages. He's been hanging out with kids from infants to toddlers on up, uh, kids that, that pull on his ears and everything, and he's 100% trusted with them. So we'll tell you exactly what we did to make that happen. On a side note, I do want to point out that obviously my co-host Cooper isn't here with me today. Um, he actually swallowed a couple of socks. Uh, hold on, let me show you. He, he swallowed a couple of these bad boys right here. And um, at least we think that's what the issue is. He stopped being interested in his food recently and he stopped eating. And uh, they did a sonogram of his stomach and they found those socks in there. So right now he's staying overnight at the vet. Um, we're hoping once they get that out, that's gonna be the only issue and he'll be good to go. But he has been kind of battling a liver thing recently. And uh, I've been planning to make a video on that. We'll make that soon. But for right now, sorry my dog isn't here to co-host this with me. Uh, I'll try to make up I'll try to make it up to you by including some extra clips of Dobermans in this video and including Cooper and some other some other Dobermans that might be kind of fun for you to see. So um, send some good thoughts our way for Cooper. I'd appreciate it. So there are a few traits that you should be aware of if you're considering a Doberman for your family. And uh, first, they're highly intelligent dogs, highly, highly intelligent, which is awesome because it makes them extremely trainable. Uh, and in fact, if you saw one of my last videos or one of my previous videos, I did uh, all about teaching dogs, uh, teaching Doberman specifically tricks extremely fast. And uh, there are some cool tricks in there that Cooper picked up so fast, I couldn't believe it. Um, and that goes to this breed. This breed is incredibly intelligent, incredibly trainable, and they really want to please their owners, which is a great thing for a family, but it also means they could get easily bored. So keep that in mind. You got to keep these dogs entertained, lots of dog toys and uh, lots of interaction with them. You can't just ignore a Doberman by any means. Um, they're also very loyal and people-oriented dogs. They, uh, they love being around their family. They'll look you in the eyes. Um, they're called, actually, Velcro dogs is what a lot of Doberman owners refer to their dogs as, as a Velcro dog because they stick to your side. Uh, they make the joke that you'll never be able to go to the bathroom alone again because they always want to stick their head in and see what you're doing. They're right there by your side. They love being near you. So make sure that that will fit in with your family environment as well. They're also incredibly loving dogs. They want attention. They want that um, approval from their family. So they'll climb up in your lap. And these dogs can weigh 90 to 100 pounds easily. So make sure you're prepared to have maybe a 100 pound dog crawling up into your lap to get some love while you're watching TV uh, or maybe even trying to get up to sleep on your bed at night uh, as they just want to be close to you. Uh, that's something that's definitely good to be aware of. If you have young kids, make sure that they're okay with that as well. Um, they are also very protective dogs. You probably already know this. That's actually why the breed was created. They were originally created to be a guard dog. And uh, this is actually a really great quality to have in my opinion in a family dog. They bond to the family and they're very protective for the family, uh, which is great. But there are some downsides as well. Just like any other dogs, they have their ups and their downs. Their downsides of being protective is there could be issues with barking. So keep that in mind. You'll have to kind of stay a little bit more on top of that. Um, again, remember they're highly trainable. So yeah, you might have some issues with barking, but they're going to respond very well with some training and some direction to kind of keep that in check. <clears throat> um, they're also an active dog. They're considered a working breed. So they won't do good if your family isn't, isn't very active. They love active families. They love going out and doing things. They um, tend to have pretty high exercise requirements. Uh, if you 
exercise the Doberman enough, they're going to be happy, they're going to be healthy, they're not going to be stressed out, and um, they're, they're just going to be overall um, a better companion for the family. Uh, so if you want an active dog to join you on family outings and you're an active family, you got the right breed. That's, that, they love that. Um, now, let's get into some more specifics. Uh, specifically, how they are with kids. Now, Dobermans with kids, they're wonderful. In general, as a general statement, they're wonderful with kids. Um, there's a couple things you can do, though, to ensure that, that your dog is going to be great with your kids. One is early socialization. Make sure your dog is socialized with kids early. I cannot stress this enough. Um, they're, uh, all those traits I mentioned earlier about them being loving and protective, they're, they're very well geared towards um, a close relationship with kids in the family. Um, and they can be very tolerant. Just make sure you socialize them early with your kids. Uh, our dog Cooper is 100% trustworthy because um, we got him used to kids from an early age. Now, how Dobermans are with other pets in the family. Now, there's a rule in general that basically says if your, do if your Doberman's used to it and grew up with it, it'll probably be fine and it'll get along. So remember, if they're used to it and they grew up with it, it'll probably be fine with your Doberman. They do well with dogs of the opposite sex. So a male and a female in the house will get along just fine. Uh, um, and actually, even a female and a female tend to get along pretty well as far as uh, with Dobermans. Now, two males in the house, sometimes you get some alpha stuff going on where they're kind of uh, jockeying for position and, and who's the alpha, and you can get some issues there. But in general, um, uh, two dogs together, the opposite sex, um, or even two females will get along just fine. Um, two males can work. You just got to pay extra close attention and kind of be on top of them. Now, as far as cats go, um, I don't own any cats myself, so I, I don't really know. I mean, I love Dobermans and I've had them around plenty, but I, I don't really know how they get along with cats. So um, I did a lot of research before making this video and um, probably the, the be there didn't seem to be a general rule. I can't tell you, yes, they get along with cats or no, they absolutely don't. Um, but what I did find was um, our I Heart Dogs, um, this website did a poll of a whole ton of Doberman owners that also had cats and asked them how well their Doberman gets along with their cat. And in that poll, 28% of the respondents said that their Doberman gets along very well with their cat. 47% said they get along okay with their cat. And 25% said not very well. They don't get along very well at all. Um, so take what you want from those stats. Um, it, it seems to be kind of hit or miss with cats. Now, as far as large animals go, horses, farm animals, that kind of stuff, um, Dormans can be fine with them. From pe the people I've talked to, it, it seems like really if you introduce them properly, kind of supervise them the first couple times that they interact, it should be okay, especially if you do it from a young age. Um, are you seeing the uh, theme here and everything I'm saying? Remember, from a young age, if they're socialized well, and uh, from a young age, and they're used to it and they grew up with it, they're fine. So. That goes with large animals as well. Let me kind of get into what we did, my wife and I did, um, to get our dog, Cooper, um, used to kids from an early age. We got Cooper when he was eight weeks old, and we didn't have any kids in the house at that time, um, but we knew someday we wanted to have kids, you know, and uh, so we wanted him to be very well socialized and very trustworthy around kids. <clears throat> so. Um, we started by first just kind of making sure we always brought him around kids as much as we could. There were some neighbor kids that we had him play with as much as we could. They had like little play dates with the neighbor kids. Um, we also brought him to all the family events that we could possibly bring him to where there would be kids present. Like we, we made sure to always bring him. We, we never left him at home so that he was used to all the kids in the family um, playing with him and poking at him and you know, you know how kids kids play with dogs. Sometimes they can be a little rough, but it's good to get them used to it early. Uh, so we also, we kind of interacted as a kid ourselves with Cooper. And what I mean by that is we kind of, and I mean this jokingly, we picked on him a little bit um, as a kid might. Uh, nothing cruel, nothing, you know, nothing like that. Just we interacted as a kid with him. So we'd be watching TV, we'd be petting him. Maybe we'd tug on his ear a little bit, or maybe we'd, you know, just lightly, just to kind of get him used to getting touched on the ear. Um, we might 
play with his paws a little bit, maybe kind of just tap his nose real gently, that kind of thing. Things that um, kids might do. We just kind of got him used to that from a very early age. Statistically, most dog bites with kids happen around feeding time and around when the dog's eating. So what we did with Cooper was from a very young age, we would feed him either his dinner or his breakfast. And as he's eating a couple times a week, we just randomly put our open hand like this, stick it right in uh, his feeding bowl. And we would just stop him from eating. So he'd have to just sit there and look at our fingers and wait for us to move our hand. And then he could go back to eating. Um, that was something we did. And we did that pretty much his whole life just to make sure that no, uh, no protectiveness around his food kind of cropped up later in life. Um, but we did that from the very beginning, a couple times a week, just whenever you think about it, he's eating, whenever you think about it, hey, I haven't put my hand in his bowl, it made him stop eating in a while, let me just do that. And that's great because even as an adult, my dog, you know, he was close to 100 pounds, a um, little bit under. He's a big dog and my toddler son can go over, stick his hand in his bowl anytime. Not that I encourage that or I try to keep him separate, but my dog will just look at him and just wait. Um, so that's a real, that's one of the best tips I could possibly give you to do that from a young age to make sure they're used to kids doing that kind of thing. Now, if you are considering getting a Doberman, I urge you to check out my website, DobermanPlanet.com. Um, my website's all geared around uh, kind of helping people get used to uh, the dogs and know what to expect with Dobermans. They're a very unique breed and you need to know what to expect, expect excuse me, <clears throat> um, if you're going to be getting a Doberman. And I, I really want to make the Doberman obtainable for the average Joe like myself um, because I think they're wonderful dogs and the average Joe can absolutely own these dogs and succeed and and just have a blast with them um, and so if you go to DobermanPlanet.com you'll learn a lot more about the breed um, I'll help you know what to expect and I'll help you get through those stages with your dog so that um, you can be successful I also urge you to go to DobermanPlanet.com slash newsletter and join my email list look I hate junk email more than you, I can pretty much guarantee it. Okay, well, I don't know, I don't know you, but I really hate um, junk email, and I'm not that way. I'm not gonna send you emails every day. I'm not even gonna send you emails every week. I'm only gonna send you an email when there's something new and exciting going on at DobermanPlanet.com, and we got a lot of really cool things going on. So if you have a passion for the breed like I do, or you're, gonna, you're developing a passion and you think you might end up getting a uh, Doberman in the future, um, Join that email list because there's some cool stuff coming down the pipe that's really going to help you out with a breed and that's really going to um, make this whole, this whole challenge of, of taking on this, this dog so much easier. Um, I'm only going to email you when these, when these cool things come down the pipe so that you're the first one and you're aware of it and you know what's going on. Thank you guys. Hit that like button and subscribe. And um, yeah, I will see you next time.